Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 60, Furloughs and Land Grabs. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my brilliant and intelligent co-host, Michelle Whalen. Ah, oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, how you doing today, sweetie? Um, better than the last couple of days. I I actually went for a walk outside this morning. Um, first time in, in a very long time. And I think the, the cool air and the kind of sunshine really wasn't very sunny out. I think kind of, kind of helped. I think the, the cabin fever is definitely (laughs) set in. Um, so it was, you know, I think today is going to be a better day than the last couple of days. That's good. How are you doing today? Doing good. Uh, just a disclaimer before we get into things here, we are playing with some new equipment here. Right. Oh, and I have apparently landscaping is happening outside. No, right? it's a plane. Is that a plane? That's a plane. That's a very loud plane. There's a plane going by. Wait a second. I didn't think any planes were. Yeah. Maybe that's why <laughs> it sounded so loud because nothing else is going on uh, so anyway, outside. Uh, playing with uh, some new equipment here. I have a new board to, to control the video. So I apologize ahead of time for any. <laughs> so this could be a really interesting that show. I do here. Uh, and we are testing out some new camera equipment on one of the angles, too. So hopefully everything works out. Fingers crossed. Um, and to top it off, <gasps> we're changing up the format a little bit here. Trying something new, uh, see if it works. So I will be handling our uh, Star Wars Insights stories. This Only week. seems fair, I think. Uh, so we we will see. So today we have uh, a couple stories on Disney Detective. Uh, we've got uh, Disney is furloughing staff now in the wake of uh, the continued COVID nineteen shutdown. Uh, but at the same time, they're also purchasing some land, mm. which I thought was kind of funny because I thought they owned all the land in Florida already. <laughs> um, and then there is another feel good story about Disney again, yep. uh, donating, stepping, stepping up, donating some equipment for our first responders. Uh, then in our Star Wars Insights, we have some information on a uh, new script writer for the Obi Wan Kenobi. Disney Plus series, and then some sad news with the death of a uh, a Star Wars actor as a result of the COVID-19. Then in our entertainment news, we will talk about some uh, feel-good stuff that HBO is doing for us Mm -hmm. uh, in our quarantine. And then fans of the show, uh, Nanny will, the Nanny will be happy with some, uh, Get together news, I guess mm-hmm. we can call it. Yep, yep. Uh, and then we'll move on to our insightful picks. So another good show. Uh, ready to get into it? Sure, let's give it a try. All right, <laughs> let's do it. For Disney Detective. So this really wasn't much of a shock that Disney is actually going to be doing uh, furloughs uh, for staffers whose jobs aren't necessary at this time. Uh, It's unclear how many employees are going to be affected, um, and it actually begins on April 19th. Uh, So the Burbank-based media giant states that uh, staffers whose jobs are, aren't are necessary at this time will be furloughed as of April 19th. The affected staffers will receive full health care benefits, plus the cost of employee and company premiums will be paid by Disney, uh, the company had said. Um, and obviously this affects, 
you know, all of their their brands. So you have, you know, 20th or Century Fox, um, you have ESPN, you have Disneyland, Disney World, you have the stores. Um, so, you know, and you have, you know, one of the, the other things that the article talked about is it wasn't sure what it was going to be doing uh, for the union members, like how that's going to you know, go into to play. So there's obviously much more talks that that need to to happen with this. Um, so on Monday, Disney to clo- uh, disclosed that the top executives would also be taking pay t- cuts on their base salary. Um, Bob Igar, uh, uh, he is uh, your best friend. Bob uh, is actually going to be forgoing his uh, base salary uh, during because you know. <laughs> He needs it, right? Well, yeah. And then, obviously, new Bob is taking a 50% pay cut. um, Because he's not nearly as rich as old Bob. (laughs) Right. And then various VPs are doing 20, you know, to 30% based on what their their grade is, um, you know, to, to help out, you know, which I thought was noble of them. You know, because there are lots of companies that that aren't there. You know, you hear various stories. We were talking about, you know, one last week, um, Texas Roadhouse, where, you know, the CEO of the company was like, I'm not getting paid, but all my employees are. And then you hear about some other companies that are like, oh, you know, let's start a GoFundMe so I can pay my employees. But yet they're, you know, billionaires and right. they're not foregoing. So right. this was, you know, nice to hear, obviously. Um, I thought... The fact that they're still paying the health benefits—that's um, huge, uh, especially that's it, a big given deal. the current health crisis. The fact that they're going to continue to pay your health benefits if you're out of work at this right, point in time right. that's, is is huge. Yeah. So again, kudos to Disney, you know, for that, and and obviously, you know, um, they they've been having issues obviously with you know the the different movies like you know they can't start production or finish production on certain ones so that's obviously pushing things back you know the park you know we we know they're they're losing billions of you know millions of dollars a day with Easily, the parks yeah. You know, being closed, you know, and when you think about like ESPN, which is a division, you know, which Disney owns, you know, they've been, you know, they don't have anything to show on television. So they're doing more replays of of old uh, sporting events. Um, They're showing classic movies and documentaries and 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 they're resorting to esports now. And and that's what's kind of funny is is seeing all these esports, you know, that, that are popping up. So, you know. So they're they're being hit, you know, hard as well. But, you know, again, the fact that they're stepping up and helping out, you know, their cast members is, is yeah, know, I, I is think a good thing. I think this is just, you know, another example of Disney mm-hmm. being a good corporate mm-hmm. citizen yeah. And, yeah. and taking care of what needs to get done. Mm-hmm. Fortunately, Disney can afford to do that. Right, exactly. And and granted, yeah, there are lots of smaller companies that that just can't. And you know, there there was uh, uh, somebody, a friend of mine, who had mentioned that there was one company that he had heard about. I guess it was an article, you know, about all of the the t- the the money we're supposed to get, you know, the the relief from from the government, right. and that some of these smaller companies were basically, oh well, if you're getting you know, twelve hundred dollars from the government. I'm deducting that from your pay. You know, yeah, when yeah. when the paychecks come out, because well, if you're already getting that money, you don't need it from me. And they got such bad press. And now again, I don't know who it was um, that th- they basically came back out and said, "Oh no, no, we we we're not going to do that." But I'm sure there are probably and there's some companies, companies that have, that have to. to. I mean, when right. you, when you look at Disney, right, and you look at Disney's current business model. Mm-hmm. They're still bringing in a boatload of mm-hmm. money in online sales right. and subscriptions and everything else. So Disney still has a viable revenue stream coming in where yeah. other businesses just are You look doing at your anything. small mom and pop <clears throat> shops, you yeah. look at your restaurant chains mm-hmm. that can't stay open. Yeah. And they yeah. don't have a revenue stream. Mm-hmm. So right. their priority really is to try to keep the business mm-hmm. afloat. While at the same time trying to help your employees, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, you and I are, are very fortunate mm-hmm. that our employers continue to to have business, right? Um, not that they're not negatively affected; they certainly are, right? Right. But 
our companies aren't shutting down. Right. Um, so we're very fortunate in that, but I can understand these other companies that, mm-hmm. that it's don't a have matter that. of survival mm-hmm. for oh, them. Yeah. You know, if they yeah. cannot maintain some kind of income coming in because, you know, student loans don't have to be paid, mortgages don't have to be paid, but your utilities still need to be paid, mm-hmm. your overhead, your your suppliers still need to be paid. Everything from a business standpoint still needs to be paid. And if you have no revenue coming in, you can't do that. Right. That's not the case with <coughs> Disney. Disney still has right. loads of revenue coming in. Granted, not nearly as much as they had, mm-hmm. uh, but they can still keep the lights on at this point in time. And and they're doing they're stepping up and doing the right thing, mm-hmm. which yeah. kudos to them for that. Yeah. They're also buying land. So tell us about yeah, that. Yeah. So despite obviously the park being closed with with everything that's going on, it seems that Disney, who is always looking to expand, has now purchased even more acres of land just west of the Magic Kingdom. So according to the Orlando Business Journal, uh, an entity related to Burbank, California's base. Uh, The Walt Disney Company has scooped up more land near Magic Kingdom. On March 31st, Celebration Company bought 26.3 acres for $1.05 million, uh, or roughly $39,923 per acre, uh, west of its theme park and on the south uh, southeastern shore of Reedy Creek, Orange County record show. Um, And just last December, uh, Disney actually purchased an an adjacent, excuse me, 235 acres for $6 million. So no word as to what it is that they're looking to use it for. But, you know, obviously Disney is always looking to expand. And what's amazing is how much, you know, land they already own down there that isn't even developed and so, that's yeah that's sort know. of sort of i don't know kind of annoying to me is that disney already owns so much land mm-hmm. that they go out of their way to preserve the experience for people by mm-hmm. by distancing things and hiding things and stuff right, like that right right and in the process of doing it down in in disney world they burn up a lot of land mm-hmm. you know they've got a highway system in there basically that sucks up a boatload oh, yeah. of of land and mm-hmm. like to me it almost looks like they're very wasteful of the land that they have there mm-hmm. um for them to then have to go out and acquire additional land right right it seems kind of strange to me considering they literally own a small country <laughs> they really do <laughs> um the the and you know, I'm not surprised at the cost of the land. Right. Uh, oh, well, of course. Because that's... you know who's buying it. Right. So you're going to, you know, that that's, you know, when you look at historically, you know, when you look at how, you know, Walt was, was starting to buy the land for Anaheim. Right. You know, and it was all these, you know, and once people knew it was them, you know, it was the Disney company, you know, the price skyrocketed. Same thing happened with the Florida project. You know, as soon as all these shell companies were found out to be, you know, owned by Disney, (laughs) everything, you know, so now they don't even have to, you know, like, yeah, it's Disney. They'll be like, right. right." It's just, okay, we're going to pay an insane amount of money for this. Right. Right. Thank you very much. So Uh, I can only imagine what they're going to be using it for. I mean, we haven't heard anything about any new parks or anything. Right, right. Is it going to be another resort? You know, they just opened uh, Riviera. You know, they're they're. Well, and you look at what they're doing in Magic Kingdom, where they've expanded Magic Kingdom now beyond its original borders. Right, that's true. For for the size of the park there, so maybe I don't they're know. adding you know more to. You know, because of it being in that area, because they couldn't really expand Magic Kingdom beyond right. where it was. So maybe they're looking to, you yeah. know, expand should be, it out. So should be interesting to see yeah. where they go with this. And I'm sure it's probably one of these things where it's like 10 years down the line before oh, they do anything. Absolutely. With this well, you know, and there's so many other, you know, different things that came out this week, um, you know, Disney related stuff where uh, there were permits that were filed for, um, the area that's Stitch's Great Escape, uh, which is a ride that for so many years it was just open seasonally, and now you know they've completely closed the ride. Um, it used to be um, 
uh, what was it before Stitch's Great Escape? It was the extraterrestrial um, ride that, you know, scared kids so they had closed that down. Um, but the speculation was really that they were just doing demolition inside, that there wasn't really a plan to do anything with the area just yet. So, you know, it's nice to see that they're still you know, in the planning stages for, for things and in the middle of doing things, you know, that they can, you know, yeah. during, during all of this shutdown. So, well, and that's the other thing with, with Disney is like, they're, they're secretive in everything mm -hmm. that they do. Yeah. Except for when they have to be public, like right. they have to be public in purchasing right. the land. Here. Right. Exactly. Or the permits for things. So right. people, you know, and then everyone goes, oh, and then you have to doing? sit around and guess, guess <laughs> right. what everybody, they're doing. Yeah. Everybody plays the, the guessing game until something yeah. finally comes out and you're like, oh, that wasn't what we were thinking. I am curious though, the property that they recent, recently bought, uh, in this story here, was it developed already? I don't think so if you look at the the map that was in the article uh it looked like it was just just undeveloped land undeveloped land okay. so it wasn't like when you know disney bought uh land in anaheim because originally what after the park was built you know all the land around it was was, was bought up by other yeah. places yeah. Um, and that was what was so funny from when we went a couple years back to when I had gone, you know, like 10, 15 years before so much has changed because Disney basically came and bought a whole area of land around Disneyland yeah. and to make, you know, and, and bought it to use it for themselves. So it had such a different look to it where with Disney world, you really don't see that because again, you know, they already have so much right, land right. around the area that, you know, you wouldn't even know, oh, is this new? Did they just buy this? I, I didn't notice. And it, you know, it's interesting because <clears throat> Disney has its own infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So they have, you know, they'll come in and do their own utilities oh, yeah. and their own yeah. roads and everything. So when I ask if it was developed, I'm curious if it was developed to the point that it may be ready to use land for them. Right, right. Right off the bat where they could be yeah. using it for backlot stuff or storage or something yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, it didn't look like it was developed as of as of yet. So Okay. And the last Disney detective story we have is a, a feel good one. Here's Tell another feel that. good. So Disney Parks is donating masks masks and ponchos to healthcare workers who are dealing with the coronavirus uh, crisis. So as hospitals are, you know, dealing with shortages uh, from medical equipment and things like that. So uh, the company has contributed more than a uh, hundred thousand N95 masks that were donated to New York, California, and Florida. In addition, they also donated 150,000 rain ponchos. Um, now, according to the Disney Park blogs, the ponchos were donated. Um, the, the It was inspired because nurses across the country found that rain ponchos could be used to protect their clothing and also prolong the use of personal protective equipment. So, you know, kind of... Interesting. You know, interesting thing, because I know, you know, you see people with, you know, garbage bags and, you know, wearing that on top of it. So here's something, the ponchos are just sitting there, might as well, you know, put them to, to good use. Uh, so they had said that the COVID-19 pandemic is unlike anything we've seen before. Uh, the president of um, MedShare... Uh, which is the company that they were giving them to. Uh, so we try to find ways to pool our resources and work together to help our healthcare workers who are doing their very best to treat pay patients. And we appreciate Disney uh, partnering with us to help support hospitals and healthcare workers on the front lines. Um, so obviously, you know, we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, Disney uh, resorts in California and Florida had already started donating food uh, to local food banks. And here's another, you know, donation that they're, they're helping out with as well. So again, kudos to, to Disney and, and all the companies, because there are, are so many companies that are out there, you know, doing donations for, for what they can to, to help everybody in this time. And, so. and to put this into perspective with the ponchos, I mean, a lot of people may hear ponchos and think, oh, well, that's just kind of silly. It's really not that effective. In reading another story that was unrelated to this, um, the test that they give you, the, the main test that they, they give you for COVID-19 mm -hmm. requires a, a deep 
nasal swab. Mm-hmm. And when the and they they don't allow the individual, the patient, to do that. The, mm-hmm. the service worker, the the medical workers, have to do this. And in doing this, it irritates the nasal passages and causes you to aspire, mm-hmm. you know, to sneeze or to cough. And as a result of that, the person who's in administering this gets people coughing on Ugh. them all the time. Okay. And every time that happens, they have to completely change out of their protective gear. Mm-hmm. So the idea of having these ponchos on top of the protective gear right. allows them to change the ponchos mm-hmm. rather than the whole gear. Right. And the gear is much harder to actually get. Right. So right. the ponchos make perfect sense in this case here. Absolutely. It does for so, that. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, another, another little brilliant move that they mm-hmm. made. Yeah. Uh, so that was all we had for Disney detectives. That was it for Disney detectives. One little side note. We didn't, I didn't put the story in, but uh, one thing that did pop up was that Disney was actually starting to take reservations now um, for uh, June 1st and on uh, at all of their locations. So I guess they're hoping um, to be kind of up and running maybe by then. Obviously, as, you know, the weeks go on, we'll we'll see. But that was something, um, you know, where most people who had reservations for dining or for resorts, you know, had to call and, and cancel or yeah. reschedule. But now it looked like, you know, they were actually going to start opening uh, the regular reservations back. So so we'll, well see. We'll see what uh, comes up with that. Light at the end of the tunnel. Yep, exactly. Uh, so we'll take a quick break. And we will take a quick break. <gasps> we actually have we a, are? a little ad to run today. So... <laughs> We'll get into Star Wars Insights in a minute. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. And now for Star Wars Insights. (laughs) (laughs) Kind of an appropriate ad for that. Oh, goodness. So the first story we had today was uh, Lucasfilm has hired Joby Harold as the new writer on the Obi-Wan Kenobi Disney Plus series. Now, you might ask, who is Joby Harold? That's a very good question. Um, Harold's writing track record is pretty thin uh, from for being someone brought in to write a very important project for Star Wars. He's never written for television. <laughs> Um, his only two writing credits to date are the Hayden Christensen anesthesia film Awake uh, and 2017's Charlie Hunnam led King Arthur Legend of the Sword, oh, okay. which you, you saw that. I just that wasn't, saw that not that long ago, actually. That wasn't actually. too bad, right? No, it was pretty cool. Uh, so if the report's true, it's a bit of a head scratcher considering how important the Kenobi series is mm. to Lucas. Um this kind of has a lot of people kind of worried here. Mm. Uh, uh, Disney has had some some issues with uh, directors and writers. I was going to say directors and, and, and writers um, on various things. Yeah, well, mostly on Star Wars, though. I mean, they <laughs> they've had some uh, yeah. Marvel issues, but for the most part, they've knocked it out of the park with Marvel. Um, so the the fact that they're bringing in a a relative unknown, inexperienced writer here for what everyone thinks has to be a knock it out of the park uh, series here is, is kind of concerning for a lot of people. And you figure this series has already had some issues to date 
you know, there all the stories that we've heard so far about it have been not very positive. Yeah, with it, like so. you know, we were told that it was supposed to be a, a great script to begin with, mm-hmm. and that script turned out to be a movie script, right? And Disney <clears throat> decided to turn it into a small series, and it looked like they were having some issues converting the right series in the movie script into viable, you know, television series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Mm-hmm. Um, the date was already pushed back. Uh, it's scheduled to begin production in January of 2021. It was writing delays that pushed it back. The one story we had a few weeks ago was you and McGregor commenting on it. Right. That, it was in jeopardy and it wasn't in jeopardy. And it turns out that it really wasn't in jeopardy. It was just in question, I guess. Right. Right. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see how well, yeah, how well that goes. But, um, hopefully they, they knock this one out of the park. They've mm-hmm. had too many issues with movies recently. Right. Um, considering the Skywalker series was, Financially, it was successful, but right. theatrically, I think it was a bust. Right. Uh, and their offshoot uh, solo was, wasn't was huge. And, and now the Cassian Andor series is, is taking a lot of criticism, right. too. So right. we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so next up, we have uh, Star Wars actor Andrew Jack has passed away at 76 from COVID-19. Mm. Uh he was a dialect coach to the stars, uh, wound up with the coronavirus and succumbed to it um, a few days ago. Uh, Andrew's rep, Jim McCullough, tells us, uh, uh, Jill McCullough, sorry, tells us her client passed away Tuesday morning at a hospital outside of London as a result of complications he developed from COVID-19. She says Andrew's wife couldn't, and this was tragic his Mm -hmm. wife couldn't be there she was also a voice coach a dialect coach as well Mm -hmm. Uh, she couldn't be there because she was under quarantine in australia having worked on a project there just recently Mm. um and there wasn't there may not even be a way to accommodate a funeral at this point yeah that's what's what's really sad is that anybody that's going through this um in general you know funeral arrangements you know, are, are kind of put on hold or, or, you know, or doing it privately without, you know, anybody there be because yeah. of everything that's going on. So, yeah, he was, he was still working up to a few weeks ago. In mm-hmm. fact, he's working on the, the new Batman movie with, mm-hmm. uh, Robert Pattinson. Yep. Um, I had read a separate article. Um, he, he had worked on Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and, um, <sighs> I forget the actor who he had worked with. And I just had it. Vigo Morrison? No. He played uh, Frodo's friend. Oh, uh, Sean Astin. Sean Astin. Thank you. We share the same birthday, by the way. Just saying. Um, <laughs> so Sean Astin had had sung his praises because mm-hmm. of how he had taken him under his wing, mm-hmm. showed him the ropes, and he was just like this this fatherly mentor figure Mm -hmm. during the entire ordeal of, of doing Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. And everyone spoke highly, um, of, of Andrew Jack, Mm -hmm. you know, from the movie itself and every, everywhere that, that he's worked at this Mm -hmm. point in time. Yeah. And it, and it was interesting because obviously his name didn't ring a bell. Even, you know, they had a, a, you know, he was in a couple of different movies, you know, kind of as a background character, you know, but hearing, you know, the the different actors that he helped with various, you know, accents and, and dialects and, and things like that was just kind of, you know, amazing to, yeah. you know, that certain characters wouldn't be as good as they were without his help, yeah. you know. And and the uh, the article that I had read had gone on to say that you know being a uh, <clears throat> a dialect coach was more than just teaching someone how to how to talk with an accent. Mm-hmm. It was mannerisms. Mm-hmm. It was understanding the culture. Um, so everyone that's worked with him has gone through this uh, educational mm-hmm. enlightenment to not only understand how to speak like the character you are, but right. but to understand that character mm-hmm. more deeply. And that was really fundamental to his his 
technique. Mm-hmm. Um, so he will be missed. He was he was seventy six years old, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was all we had for Star Wars insights. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will come back with entertainment news. Okay. About HBO. So HBO is making thirty nine movies and shows available for free in case you've run out of things to watch on on Netflix. Uh, so according to uh, an article on BuzzFeed, um, HBO has various shows and movies and documentaries uh, that they're making available, you know, for free. So if you've never watched any of you know these shows uh, or series before, here's your opportunity now uh, to watch them. Now, it didn't say for how long they'd be available, um, but you know, the list you know goes from some current, uh, you know, more recent shows um, to some that you know were from years ago, like The Sopranos, uh, or one of our favorites, True Blood. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Which we never actually finished, so maybe now we could, you know, go back and, and pick up where we left off. Uh, Veep and The Wire, Silicon Valley, Six Feet Under, which was a favorite of mine and, and my mom's. Um, and then various uh, documentary series um, that they had produced, uh, as well as, you know, various movies. Um, you know, some from like, you know, the 1980s to, you know, more current. A couple of kids' movies were listed, you know, as well. So I thought that was a, a nice thing, you know, for, for them. Um, you know, we talked about last week how um, Picard, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, <laughs> you know, that that became available. And actually, it was all of uh, CBS Access uh, became available. And we, you know, signed up for our free um you know, one month trial, you know, and given Which that. Which I know up, I'm going to get stiffed and have to pay for. <laughs> no, you're not. We'll be done with it before. But, you know, it, it's nice to see that there's all these different companies, you know, coming out and, and doing that, you know, since everybody's and home you know, and has time to, to watch everything. <laughs> I, I don't want to be Debbie Downer here. Oh, no. But these people aren't art altruistic. These people are using a <laughs> a, a uh, international worldwide crisis Mm -hmm. to basically market their products to people. Well, yeah, but they're they're helping to keep people entertained. They're no different than crack dealers. First (laughs) one's free and then the rest he's going to charge you for. Uh, That's how I look at it. Okay. You know, you look, you look at all these TV commercials, all your, your Honda dealer and this dealer and oh, we're here for you, you know, blah, blah. No, you're not. You're really trying to capitalize on a crisis at this point in time to sell stuff. And that's all HBO is really doing here. And that's all CBS Interactive is doing. Well, the thing is, CB- with HBO, it's all old stuff. It's, I think, only one or two shows are, are actually Right, so they're, current, trying, they're so. trying to get you hooked on a little bit here without giving away the, the bank. <laughs> and, you know, they're going to hook a certain percentage okay. of people. It's probably like that 70-30. Like 70% aren't going to subscribe and 30% will, but... Mm-hmm. They're going to use it to, to get you to subscribe. So okay. I remain skeptical of these <laughs> seemingly altruistic efforts okay. by people. Sure. So tell us about the nanny. So this was a, a cute little story that, that popped up the other day. So Fran Drescher and the original cast of the 1990s classic The Nanny are reuniting for a special fan experience. So on Tuesday, uh, Drescher, who was the create co-creator and star of the show, had announced on her Instagram that um, the nanny would actually be doing a Zoom uh, reunion this coming Monday um, with the original cast. Um, so this was kind of kind of cute. Um, they are actually going to be doing a table read of the pilot episode of the 1993 episode of The Nanny. Uh, so it was cute. They actually had a picture of, of all of the cast uh, in their little Zoom meeting and stuff. And it's so funny because, like, you know, the little kids aren't little kids anymore. They're, you know, adults with their own kids. And they don't um, need a nanny at this point. And they don't need an, uh, a nanny anymore. Um, and basically every member of the the original cast is, is going to be part of it. Um, so uh, it talked that it was going to be, they were going to be doing it on uh, Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific time. 
Uh, so you can log on and and see the cast and you know watch the now I don't know if they already recorded it or if they're going to be doing it live but you know it did kind of you know again something kind of cool and different that you know you wouldn't be experiencing <clears throat> you know probably any other time you know because people are trying to to fill their their time with you know various things yeah. so I thought it was kind of See, now that is kind of cool. Now, I was never a fan of the nanny. Yeah, I, I um, watched mainly because it. <laughs> I, I think Fred Trescher is really annoying. But what's so funny is that's totally her persona. I know. I that's know. what, like, if you actually hear her in a regular I know. interview with her not be, and that's the thing, is even in the 90s, you know, after, you know, when the show became popular, that be kind of like Pee Wee Herman, you right. know, that was the persona. She was a character. That was her character. And even in some of the movies that she made, that was her she, character. Right. Where now in today, you know, she totally, unless she's playing it up. Right. That's totally not, you know, not what she is. So. But I think for the nostalgic factor. Oh, absolutely. I think, I think <clears throat> right now with everything that's going on, mm -hmm. people need to feel good. Mm-hmm. And I think when you go back to something, a show that's that's innocent and mm -hmm. funny and right, fun, right. you know, it is that that feel good kind of stuff. Right, right. Um, and the fact that the the cast and crew are coming back to do mm -hmm. this, I think it's kind of cool. Well, yeah. and and you know, this I didn't add to it also, but obviously we go to different, you know, from if you've ever watched any of our podcasts, you know, we go to different conventions and and things like that. Um, and one of the th uh, conventions that we've talked about a couple of times is Wizards, Wizard World. Um, we were going to go <laughs> to it this year, and then now we're not even sure if it's even happening. Right. Um, Wizards is a, a international. They, they do various locations. Um, so one of the things that they actually started doing, because obviously people can't go to conventions right now, is they're doing uh, virtual Q&As. With various cast members. So, right. you know, if you've never gone to a convention, one of the things that they have is they have these different panels. Uh, and it'll be various celebrities or stars from a certain show or genre or artists or whatever. Um, so yesterday they actually did um, a Q&A with a bunch of um, stars from Once Upon a Time. So that was kind of cool. Everybody's in their house, and they're basically on a Zoom meeting. Uh, they were uh, doing it through Twitch. They were uh, live streaming through Twitch, uh, through Facebook Live, um, and a couple of other you know different platforms. Uh, the week before, they had done one with a bunch of uh, cast members from uh, Supernatural. Um, and I saw that they posted that for next Saturday, they're doing the cast from Buffy. Oh, cool. uh, Buffy slash Angel. So various, you so know. So the series, not the movie. The series. Um, so I think that's kind of cool. Again, something, you know, you can't leave your house. You can't go and experience, you know, a, a convention. So here's a virtual, you know, experience. And they're all free, yeah. um, which is nice. Because uh, I know there were a couple of. Well, and we would we'd <clears throat> usually never get into most of these panels anyway. Right, because you, cause have, you have, to have to wait. Reser reserve them in so far in advance. Right, so this is kind of cool. So somebody that maybe, and you know, and they even talked about it too uh, during the Supernatural one, was they were saying how awesome this was to do because there are so many people who either don't live near where a convention normally happens and would love to be able to experience one. And here was a way for, for them to experience it you know, without having to, to be around, yeah. you know, people cool. or, or waiting in line. So that that's, you know, another kind of cool thing that that's popped up because of the situation that we're all, you know, right. in right now. So silver lining. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Always looking for silver lining. Yep. 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 Uh, so I think that was all we had for entertainment news. We yep. will come back with our insightful picks of the week. Okay. Dear, you can go first. Well, I thank you. So uh, this Friday night, like almost every other family, I think, uh, was doing, um, we watched uh, Onward 
on Disney Plus. Uh, so the movie actually came out in theaters um, in uh, the beginning of March. We didn't get around to, to seeing it before uh, everything, but this was one of the ones that uh, Disney came out a couple of weeks ago saying that they were going to be releasing it uh, digitally and uh, on Blu-ray, and then also it was going to be uh, available on Disney Plus as of Friday. Uh, Friday, So we decided to have a family movie night, so the three of us were all cuddled together um, watching it, and it was, you know, lived up to Disney Pixar's uh, expectations. Uh, so teenage elf brothers Ian and Barley embark on a magical quest to spend one more day with their late father. Like any good adventure, the journey is filled with cryptic maps, impossible obstacles, and unimaginable discoveries. But when Dear Mom finds out that her sons are missing, she teams up with a legendary manticore to bring her beloved sons back home. Um... If you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons, this is like chock full of Easter eggs and and various things. Uh, e even giving that. credits to Wizards of the Coast and Dungeons. Yeah, and Dragons. that was that was actually kind of kind of cool, um, and just you know it, it it tugs at the heartstrings. You know the last twenty minutes. You know, even our daughter, you know, afterwards was like, it was anybody else crying like me? And I was like, yeah, yeah, we all were. <laughs> um, you know, and it stars the voices of Tom Holland, uh, Chris Pratt. And it's so funny because Tom Holland obviously does Spider-Man. Um, and he kind of had a very, you know, there's a lot of parallels between Peter Parker and, and Ian. And then Chris Pratt who obviously, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy, it was a very over-the-top, you yep. know, um, Star-Lord, you know, uh, comparison as well. Uh, Julia Louis-Dreyfus actually does the mother, it plays the mother, and Octavia Spencer is the manticore. Uh, so a really fun cast, really interesting, you know, so, you know, the premise is that years ago, everybody had magic, you know, and it was a magical land. And then we kind of got lazy, you know, it, magic Magic's was hard. Magic was hard. It was easier to flick a switch than, you know, try and conjure up fire. And, you know, over time, we've lost our magic. We'll see what um, the... the premise that I liked there was that, oh, well, magic did exist, but technology was easier than magic right. technology took over. Right, right. That which was, I thought was kind of fun. Yeah, and that, you know, you kind of need to sit back and follow your magic. Yeah. You know, that everybody has magic in them. You just need to, to bring it, you yeah. know, back out. So Very cool. Yeah. Good pick. Good Thank movie. You. Good pick. My pick this week. <gasps> What's your pick, honey? Well, not all right. I gotta fix my oh, my hold on. We gotta fix your here. Hang. See, I gotta find the mouse, and then I gotta come up here, and I gotta click yeah, on that. There messy, we messy. go. Okay. Oh, hey, wow. So, kind of like it was uh, not so subtly hinted at earlier. My <laughs> pick, uh, insightful pick this week, is Star Trek Picard. Now, I will say, uh, caveat: we're only two episodes in, so mm -hmm. I'm not passing judgment on the season just yet. Right. But I will read the intro. Nearly two decades after Commander Data's demise and following the destruction of the Romulan star system and the withdrawal of Federation support for its evacuation, Jean-Luc Picard, or Jean-Luc Picard, as Q <laughs> called him. I still love that. And Starfleet, quote unquote, separated for reasons that have never been made public by either party until now. Picard has been having recurrent dreams in which he interacts with Data. One of these recalls a painting Data titled Daughter. A mysterious young woman named Dodge comes to Patrick, uh, comes to Picard for help, and he discovers she is a biological synthetic created by Dr. Bruce Maddox. Dun, dun, dun. Based on Data's positronic brain, making her Data's daughter. Now, if you were a fan of the Next Generation series, Bruce Maddox happens to be the Starfleet officer who went on trial to argue whether or not Data was sentient or not. That was that one big gotcha, one big episode there. After Dodge is murdered, 
a secret society of Romulans because who else? I mean, all the Romulans are secret societies. Right, right. Uh, who believes that she is a prophesized destroyer of all life. Picard learns that she has a twin sister. Mm. Yep, just like Luke and Leia. <laughs> uh, he makes it his mission to find her and to preserve the legacy of his old friend. Um, it was okay. It had a very... Uh, next gen feel to yeah, it. Yeah, it did. Uh, some retread themes. Uh, there was some undiscovered country feelings going on mm -hmm. in there, and uh, yeah, jury's still out. You know, I'm I'm interested um, enough to continue watching. Right, it. I'm I'm definitely. You know, I was obviously a fan of Next Generation, um, and you know, I, I was a fan of the uh, original Star Trek because of my dad. Um, Which to you is like watching it all over for the first time because every time you see an episode, you're like, I don't I'm remember, like, this, I don't one. remember this one. I remember this one, you know, because I, I watched it, you know, obviously the, the series had ended before I was even born, um, you know, so a lot of them I'm like, did I see this one? I don't remember. So every Saturday night, it's, it's like a new episode. Right. Um, what I like about Picard <laughs> is that it's not like Next Generation was not serial. They right. were all basically standalone episodes. Mm -hmm. You'd sometimes get references back to historical right. things. Right, right. But they were all standalone. Mm -hmm. So if you missed one, it didn't matter. You could catch up on it the next week. Right, right. And like with all drama today on, on television and streaming, mm -hmm. it's this is serial. So oh, yeah. it yeah. builds one to the next mm -hmm. to the next. Yeah. There's an underlying plot that you're trying to deal with, and then there's a plot each week that you're looking at here. Mm -hmm. um, so clearly they're trying to build towards something mm -hmm. here. Um, I do know there's some sort of spoiler, you know, some sort of thing in the final episode because a friend of mine who has already well, I would watched certainly it. Hope so. Well, no, he was pissed because I guess he's part of a, a Facebook group or something, and somebody mentioned the spoiler oh. and he was like thanks oh. you know whatever for ruining it for me so i'm kind of glad i'm not reading anything right, about right, it right. you know the one funny meme which i kind of picked up on too was there's a scene we haven't gotten to this 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 episode yet but in the background there's uh lights you know, just regular lights like we have, and there, right, there's the right the, it's the the IKEA light that we always say looks like the Death Star, um, where some people have actually painted it to look like the Death Star, and the meme was basically, oh, good to see that IKEA is still in business in the 24th century. Oh uh, well, there's you know? there's another reference to lights that has to go back to the Next Generation one when he was held captive by the Cardassians. Okay, too. So okay, it might be the same episode. I don't, I know. don't know. So it was kind of funny because I even picked up on it in one of the first episodes where he's you know. Sitting, He's got Ikea furniture. And it's like, I'm like, that's so Ikea yeah. furniture. I'm like, oh, good. Ikea is around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was so. kind of funny. Anyway. <laughs> but a very uh, good pick. So. Season one of Star Trek Picard is available now on CBS All Access and is free for the month of April during a special promotion period. Mm -hmm. So just for everyone's knowledge there. Yep. I think that was all we had. That was it. Uh, did we have any final thoughts or anything before we uh, cut out? Just stay safe, everyone. Um, you know, wash your hands. Get Don't some sun anyone. if you can. You know, stand outside for a little bit. Get get outside of your house or, yeah. or apartment or, or something and, and, you know, and we'll all get through it. Yep. So before we go, we do want to invite you to subscribe to us on Twitch. Uh, follow us on Twitch. Subscribe on YouTube. You can catch audio and video of our podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, which, by the way, Google just released their new podcast application. I would highly recommend you take a look at it. It's a, it's a great free podcast that you can get your subscriptions automatically on. We are on Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn. You can get us on Overcast, PocketCast, Castro, CastBox, Podcaster, and just about everything else. <laughs> we're all over the place. Um, you can also, <clears throat> I'm going to throw contact information out there now because we're on the new camera, by the way. So I'd love to hear opinions of whether or not you like the new camera or not. It's a, it's a higher quality camera. Uh, you can, as I said, watch us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. Email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. 
Uh, you can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On YouTube at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Uh, links to everything on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Or our audio podcast at uh, podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. And finally, you can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. Phew! And I think that there's so many ways for people to reach out to us and nobody ever seems to do it. Eh. Am I going to have to put a phone number out there and turn this into a call-in show? <laughs> that would actually be kind of cool to, you know, do a, a call-in We call can do that. I have the technology yeah. to do that. We could even so, have you Skype in if you wanted to. That that would work, too. So, anyway, that's all we have for this week. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Stay safe. Wash your hands and don't touch anyone. We're out of here. We're out. <laughs>